Okay, so we are recording. So first, I want to thank you, Dr. Liz Ellaby, for joining us today. Um, we know your schedule is very busy, and um, we, we definitely appreciate it. Um, just to give a little background to everybody that's following along, we want to first thank you guys for following us um, during this month of Black History Month and watching these interviews and taking part in them. For us, we wanted at Arm to think outside the box and highlight uh, you know, Black leaders that are right here locally in our state, in our community that are doing some really positive things and, and just get to know them. Um, with that, we also wanted to include some of our scholars um, as well to take part in this interview process and just kind of help with networking and just kind of learning. So you know, today we have Kiana here, uh, one of our scholars at Armstrong High School. I'll hand it off to her so she can introduce herself and, and let us know a little bit of what she's involved in here at Armstrong. So, okay. Um, hi, my name is Kiana Adams. I'm at I'm in 11th grade at Armstrong, and some of the like things I'm involved in. I'm involved in well, I was for 9th and 10th grade involved in the HBCU HSI um, experience where we learn about HBCUs and HSI. And and I'm in a reading group with Miss Yang, where we just we basically read books and then we um, talk about how we talk about the books and we do the um, compass. It's like you say how you're feeling, if you're feeling, thinking, like you say what quadrant you're in basically. And I'm also in um, what was the other thing? I'm in act on it, act on it with Miss Yang too, where well, one of the things that we did was, was we did a food drive. So um, people like homeless people or just people that need food for Thanksgiving could get food from Armstrong. So we did a food drive and we, um, we posted it on like Schoology and stuff and people could just come and bring food like cans and stuff um, and put it in the box and then people that need food for Thanksgiving could get food. And that was just one thing that we did. Nice, nice. Well, hey, so next steps for us um, is uh, Kiana's gonna, Kiana's gonna go ahead and go her questions one at a time, uh, Dr. Ellaby, and then um, we'll go from there. So it's on you. Me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, one of the first, the first question is, what do you consider your greatest life accomplishment? Um, I think I, it's hard to just pinpoint one thing. And so I've started to kind of take on this belief of like really just celebrating like every milestone. So like whether that's graduating high school or college or accomplishments like in athletics, like all of those things I think ultimately have kind of shaped who I am. And so I'm proud of all those things equally okay okay um next question is who is your role model or someone who who has helped inspire you you to get you get you to the place that you are today and why are they your role model my parents um both of my parents are immigrants and they came here um essentially out of high school to go to college and i think um, being in a place with really no support and being young and still being able to um, achieve some of the things that they have done today, I find it um, extremely inspiring. And I think um, they have most certainly shown me um, like the benefits of hard work and discipline. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the third question is, tell us about yourself, your background, high school and college you attend you attended what are you currently doing for your career so i went to brooklyn center high school and then i went to the university of minnesota for undergrad where i graduated um, with a degree in physiology so i know all of you guys who are interested in medicine you don't actually have to pursue a field in science so just know that um when i was in college i was in the track and field team so that was a very big part of what i did um, and then I went to med school in St. Louis, Missouri, St. Louis University. Um, after med school, I went to residency. So this is a long process. 
um, in Nashville, Tennessee at Vanderbilt. And now I work at Hennepin County Medical Center or Hennepin Healthcare. I'm an OBGYN or obstetrician gynecologist. And so we really just specialize in women's health. So whether that's babies or just like um, preventative health care or female surgeries, we kind of do it all. Okay. Real, real, real quick, real, real quick, Keanu, before you ask the, the, the fourth question, uh, Dr. Ellaby, can you kind of talk about a little bit, like, what does a day look like for you? And I know it probably changes every day. So I like my field because my days are never the same. Um, I can be in clinic, I can be on labor and delivery, I can be in the operating room. Um, and then just under the realm of OBGYNs, there's so many different things that you can do. So if you like to specialize with adolescents, there's a subspecialty, there's a subspecialty of OBGYNs who just deal with children and adolescents. There's people who deal with just um, like infertility or hormonal issues. There's people who just deal with um, surgeries. There's people who just deal with female cancer, so ovarian cancer or uterine cancer. Um, and so you as an OBGYN get to kind of dabble into all of those things. And so today I was in the jail earlier um, and then I saw a patient in clinic. Now I'm here with you. Um, I sit on a few committees. So the Minnesota Hospital Association is the committee that you sit on. And so you help um, make sure that your hospital is kind of staying in line with the standard of care throughout the state and you guys review um, you know, outcomes and um, kind of protocols at other hospitals to make sure that we're all doing the same thing. And then I have clinic again this afternoon. So, you, you know, I don't just sit around all day. Like we get to do a lot of different things to keep us on our toes. Oh, that's great. That's great. Okay. And before the fourth question, can I just ask one question? Um, how many years of schooling did you have to do to do so your career? You do your college and then you do four years of med school. And then residency mm -hmm. really depends on what it is that you want to do. So for an OBGYN, we do four years of residency on top of our four years of med school. And then if you want to subspecialize in any of those things that we just talked about. So if you wanted to do like female cancers or you wanted to do kind of infertility, those are an additional mm -hmm. three to four years of study after residency. So it can be anywhere, depending on what you decide to do, um, an additional nine to maybe even 12 to 14 years after you're done with college. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> after you're done with college. Yes. Yeah. yeah. However, I will say a lot of people get really like turned off by I don't want to be in school, but mind you, like our school days aren't sitting in a classroom per se. Right. So really just your mm -hmm. first two years of medical school, are you in a classroom? But after that, you're like in the hospital. So it's, it's no different than having a job. Oh, okay. That's a great point. Okay. All right. um, so the fourth question is, can you share any advice for high school students who are trying to figure out their plan in life? I think when you're in high school, you're kind of caught in this weird age of being a child, but also like on your way to adulthood. And so I think it's really important for high school students um, to realize that while you need to have fun, the decisions that you're making today really do shape a lot of what happens in your future. And so what, whether that you, whether it's you making really good decisions that will impact your future or making not so good decisions, and I'm not going to say will eliminate your chances of you doing what you want to do, but will just, will certainly make it harder. And, um, you have to remember that. And I think also look at your friends and who you're surrounding yourself with. Your friends are a really good reflection of who you are. And so if you don't necessarily like what you see when you're looking at your friends, they're a reflection of who you are. Um, so you need to surround yourself with like-minded people because you guys will motivate each other. And then ask yourself really what you want and what's important to you. And I think you don't necessarily know that in high school, but you know, it, kind of controversial, but maybe college is not for everyone. But if college is not for you, what do you plan on doing, right? And so if you're not going to class and you're not really disciplined enough to do anything else, college is not for you, but you're setting yourself up to not accomplish any of the things that you're saying you want or that's important to you in life. Okay. Shout out to college. It's very yeah. important. 
Yeah, yeah, no, you brought you brought up a lot of great points right there, Dr. Allaby. And I think number one, it seems to be real common during our interviews this month is really people looking at their circle of friends and, and seeing are they going to be those positive people that are going to help them reach those goals that they have. It seems like that's a common thing from people that are very successful um, yeah. coming across. So I appreciate you echoing that. And then also um, the field of, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're promoting college as well, right? And, and education and being a lifelong learner. But I think you hit on a good point too, as well as we do have students that do jump in the trades, which is okay as well. Um, but you have to take time to find out, hey, what is it that you want to get involved in? So, I mean, a lot of good points that you hit there. So thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is, what is, wait, okay. as a leader in the Black community, what advice do you have for high school students as they prepare for their post high school life? Uh, I think you just need to be curious and try things, you know, things that you don't necessarily think that you like, you might like, and things that you are pretty certain you will like, you might, you might not. Um, so I think, you know, dabbling and, um, you know, paying attention and taking opportunities that are presented to you, even if you're just not sure about it, there's, there's no downside. Okay. Um, the next question is, what's your mission or what is your why? Just in what I do, in like my career? Yeah, like what's your why? What is your why? Yeah. Women's health and like education. So, you know, right now, um, something that's been very prevalent since George Floyd is health inequities, especially in people who look like us. And um, a big factor in that is really recruiting providers at every single level that share a demographic. So whether that's race or ethnicity with the population of people that they're treating. Um, and so I, I love what I do because I love my patients and um, just me being me have the ability to make an impact when it comes to healthcare. And that's a really big motivating factor for me. And I will tell you, there's a really big education piece that's a part of it. Um, you know, you have to know about yourself and your body so that you can be your best advocate. And so that's really what I try to and still in my patients so that no matter where they go, they can advocate for themselves. Nice, nice. So before we move on to my questions real quick, um, just to kind of circle back, I know you said in question five, you just said being curious and trying new things. And, and that's came up as well. And, and, and I feel like a lot of high school students miss out on opportunities because it might not seem cool or it's like told that's something that we don't do. Um, I know one thing during quarantine that I've been sharing with some students, but a lot of, you know, just people in the building, teachers and other principals and stuff is like, they said, well, what did you pick up during quarantine? I said, finally, I decided to cough. And now I'm kicking myself because it's actually super fun. Right. And I wish I could have did this in high school, but it wasn't the cool thing. Or growing up over North Minneapolis, you didn't see a lot of black kids trying to golf or whatnot. So, you know, the thing is, is I think that's a big piece is being curious and trying and knowing that everything's a learning opportunity and an experience that goes a long ways that can open up different doors as well. So, you know, definitely glad that you touched on that um, because that seems to be a consistent thing when we're talking about with our interviews this month. So. Power five, we call it quick fire. Okay. Be, so there's five questions you want to answer in one word or one sentence. Um, first one is going to be, what brings you the most joy right now? Uh, travel. <laughs> the thought of travel. Nice, nice. Okay. What do you want your family to think of when they hear your name? Uh, changer. Nice. Your favorite cartoon growing up? Arthur. Nice. Okay. The book that's had the book that has had the greatest impact on you or one that you would recommend? Uh, kite run or kite runner. Okay. 
And then the last one is your message that you would tell all high school students. I know you kind of touched on that kind of throughout the interview process, but anything that you would leave us with? Uh, I mean, honestly, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. And I think to hold on to that and like to really like take in those words and reflect on those words because you everything that you're going through is is shaping you for the future. Every adversity, every hardship, all of that um, is going to make you that much better in whatever field, whatever it is you decide to do. No, we, we thank you for that. So that's that's it for our interview. Before I close out, I, I just want to thank you, Dr. Ellaby, as I know your day is busy, like you touched on, just doing a multiple of different things. Um, but I think it's really huge just for our students um, and our parents and, and our teachers and staff to just get to, to meet new people and learn. Um, and this experience this month has been very well, has worked very well for us and, and, and definitely getting a lot of people clicking in and following once we post. So we want to thank you um, and definitely, man, have a great day. Thanks, Mr. Ware. And of course,